It was a long, smooth pull through the placid harbor waters. 26-year-old Irishman Tom McLean, all five foot six inches of stoutness, bent his back in what was a not-too-regular rowing rhythm as he concentrated on getting a feel for his boat. He had dubbed his vessel Super Silver, the result of a deal of $1,000 from the Gillette UK company, which was launching a new razor by that name. Tom himself simply called his rowboat Silver. At this stage, the boat meant little more to McLean than a conglomeration of plywood, oak frame, nylon canvas, glue, and epoxy resin, from which came an assembly of hull, floors, planking, gunwales, oarlocks, and bows. It wasn't that he disliked his rowboat. He was unsure how well it would perform for him. How would the boat do in the rough open ocean? How would it stand up to the serious, even life-threatening challenges that were sure to come? Could silver stand the strain? Could it take him all the way home, the full 2,000-plus miles from Newfoundland to Ireland? He liked the look of his boat, but there was no reason yet to love it, and he didn't. It was 8.45 a.m. Saturday, May 17, 1969. Tom had wanted to be in the water with Silver at least 45 minutes earlier, but the large crowd of interested spectators and well-wishers on the quay at St. John's Harbor that weekend morning made a prompt departure impossible. Half the world and his wife were there to see me go, Tom remembers. A conflux of maritime Canadians, estimated at over 200, had come down to the wharf to watch the chap who they had heard accurately was an active-duty British soldier on leave from his commando unit, take off to cross the ocean in a rowboat. The onlookers applauded his arrival and cheered loudly as he made his way through them and down to his boat. One rascal handed him a girly magazine. There you are, sir. That'll give you something to keep you heading for home. Making it down to the dock where Silver was tied up, a bearded man that Tom had every reason to think was a veteran fisherman handed Tom a bottle of whiskey. Christen the boat with that, he shouted for all to hear. Immediately, Tom did just that, cracking the bottle and, in an act of ultimate sacrifice in a place where whiskey was currency, pouring out every last drop of the precious liquid over the bow.